Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I'm John Colmel. This was just announced to have the honor of serving as chairman of the Board of Trustees of the New York Power Authority. I'm incredibly proud to be here today. I not only welcome all of you, but most notably our new governor, Kathy Hochul, to our magnificent power project. Before we begin the program, I do want to acknowledge uh, uh, several people who have uh, taken time to join us this morning. Steve Broderick, uh, Town of Lewiston uh, Supervisor. Please give Steve a nice warm round of applause. And representing Niagara University, our wonderful neighbor, uh, literally next door, we have Dr. Kali uh, with us. Doctor, thanks for making time. And uh, representing our incredible partnership uh, with Labor, couldn't do it without them. They make it happen each and every day. It's Lou Fezzaroli, business manager with Local 2104. Lou, thanks very much. Governor Holkel and I have long shared an incredibly strong passion for the Buffalo Niagara region. We're both from here. We call Western New York home, and we're both very, very proud to do so. And we've both invested years of time, effort, and energy to make sure where all of us live, work, and play is a better place for everyone. Hence, while fortunate to share the stage with her at numerous NIPA events over the last several years, it's a very real honor and privilege to have her here today, now as our governor. And for her help, to help us celebrate the rebirth of one of our crown jewels, the Niagara Power Project. When this project was first opened in 1961, then President John F. Kennedy called it an example of the world of North American efficiency and determination. And now, 60 years later, we're even more proud that we're making a significant and unprecedented clean energy investment in this plant. So today we mark the first two significant milestones. One, the completion of the life extension and modernization of the Lewiston pump generating plant just up the hill from us, as well as the digitization of the first turbine unit under the next generation Niagara modernization program. Both of these initiatives will ensure NIPA's ability to continue to literally power economic growth and development across the state and remain a leader in energy reliability and resiliency. And as a result, this power project will be even better positioned to lead New York State and Governor Hochul's mission to decarbonize the power system and provide clean, renewable energy resources to New Yorkers for decades to come. With that said, I'm now very, very pleased to introduce New York's 57th governor, the leader of the state's ambitious and visionary plans for a carbon-free energy system, a tremendous supporter and advocate of the Power Authority, and a great friend to all of us in Western New York. Please join me in welcoming Governor Kathy Hochul. Thank you very much. Thank you, John, for the fabulous introduction and the homecoming, the welcome that I always feel when I'm uh, on this part of the state. And John, you have been an extraordinary public servant for many years, taking so seriously the responsibility of the stewardship of what we're doing here and so many other places across the state. So I just want to give you a round of applause for the leadership you've displayed as our chairman. And Gil Quinones, uh, the president and CEO, we were just together in New York City a day or two ago. Yesterday, I don't even know anymore. Uh, it's been such a joy to work with you and to share your vision of the great potential we have of harnessing this power, uh, not just to keep the lights on, but truly to fund incredible projects in every corner of the state. So I've shared in the work that you've done in places like children's museums and places uh, all across, you know, look at what's happening in Buffalo and Niagara Falls as a result of this, our hometown. So thank you for making sure that we spend all the money in the right places to help lift up people across the state. Let's give a round of applause. And uh, Daniela Piper, thank you for the great tour we just did. I uh, 
My hair's a little messy. I had the helmet on a couple minutes ago. Uh, but this is not my first time here. Uh, you and Chris and others who gave us the tour. I came here as a tourist, uh, a resident of this area with my family many times. I came here as a member of Congress and got the full tour of all the turbines and got the whole sense of everything that's involved here. I've been here even five years ago. I came to mark the milestone of the halfway point uh, for where we are today. So I was so glad I couldn't have foreseen five years ago that I'd be serving as governor for this milestone, but it's pretty good to be here. It's very good to be here, but also other partners, and that includes the amazing men and women of 2104, 2104, our great partners at IBEW. You guys do such incredible work. Lou, thank you for your leadership. Um, extraordinary, extraordinary. And I also want to point out something that most people do not know. The incredible sacrifices that were endured during this pandemic. Everyone's talked about the essential workers and you think of healthcare, yes, they're essential, the grocery store workers. But did everybody notice that their lights stayed on? The power continued to flow into your homes and your businesses during a global pandemic. Who do you think made that happen? It's the men and women, and many had to be sequestered literally for 30 days in trailers because we could not afford to have someone who knew how to unleash this power that is so necessary, the lifeline across the state. We couldn't have them go down with COVID. So they literally sacrificed 30 days alone away from their families to make sure they stayed healthy during the pandemic to keep the lights on in the state of New York. Let's give all the members of this family an incredible round of applause for their sacrifice. And why we're so excited about the clean energy opportunity afforded by this plant. I don't know that when John Kennedy made those beautiful remarks about this and the work that was done by 11,000 men and women, probably mostly men, but people who built this back in the late 50s and 60s, this was basically as audacious as the Erie Canal was when that was first built. When people said, are you kidding me? Can you really do that? And we got it done in four years. And that is still going to go down as part of the legacy of this incredible, massive facility that continues to be such a critical part of our, our states. Our, our state does not live without this facility. We cannot exist without this power. But back then, we weren't talking about how important clean power truly was for our protecting our environment. We hadn't seen the, uh, the apocalypse, which is now occurring in our, in our country, in our nation, uh, across the world because of climate change. It's been devastating the floods, the storms, the raging weather, uh, records being broken all the time, more water, more high temperature, more uh, fires out west. It's been quite extraordinary. And I want to say that it's such a point of pride for me to know that in my home state of New York, we have been leading the way for generations. And it all started with the vision behind this plant that you are all part of. And it's also hundreds of thousands of jobs across the state reliant on this plant. So I am very proud to announce the completion of this 10-year, $460 million modernization of New York Power Authority's Lewiston pump generating plant. Uh, this now says we're ready, not just for the 21st century, but beyond. And I want to know that, let them know that we, replace, we have state-of-the-art digital controls. We replaced 12 pump turbines that went back to the very beginning of this facility. Getting a little old, my friends. It was time to uh, retool these pumps, and we got it done in this decade. We also said that we have to do more to digitize. We have 13 hydropower turbines right here, and we are launching the next generation plant, which is a $1.1 billion, 15-year modernization and digitization program that's replacing aging equipment with world-class technology. Together, this represents $1.6 billion of clean energy infrastructure improvements. We may not live long enough to see the fruits of what we're doing here, but our children and their children will have a cleaner environment launching into the future in their lives as a result of the work that we're doing here, leaning hard into our clean energy opportunities. It's going to advance New York State's aggressive clean energy goal of transitioning 100% 100% carbon-free by 2020, 2040, not 2020, 2040. And so we're going to continue fighting. Uh, sometimes the rages of Mother Nature feels like she's getting the upper hand on us. 
but this is how we fight back. We build resiliency, we launch clean power, and we invest in projects like these, and I want to thank every person who was involved in this extraordinary decade-long journey to get us where we are today, but again, we're launching another one for the next 15 years to make sure that we are prepared for the challenges of the future. You, my friends, are all part of that incredible story, and I thank you for the role you play. Thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to invite up Gil Quinones to give an, talk about uh, in more detail what we're doing here. Thank you, Gil. Thank you very much, uh, Governor Hochul, for your kind words uh, about the Power Authority and this Niagara Power Project. For those of you who are watching today, the New York Power Authority is the largest state-owned electric utility in the United States. We produce about 25% of all electricity in New York, 80% from clean hydroelectric power, largely from here, Niagara Power Project, and we also own and operate a third of the grid, the power transmission system. So think of NIPA as the backbone and the shock absorber of the power system of our state. This facility is often referred as the jewel in New York State's energy system, this Niagara Power Project. And we are thrilled, Governor, that you are here with us today to celebrate with us and recognize those people who have completed this vital work. Governor, when you came here in 2017 to celebrate the halfway point of the life extension and modernization for the Lewiston pump generating plant, you inspired us to do similar work at the project's bigger generator, the Robert Moses Power Plant, where we stand today. You encourage us to take the idea of life extension and modernization to a higher level. As a native of Western New York, you fully understood the significance of this great asset, not only to the region, but to the entire state. Fueled by your inspiration and support for our work, we developed our Next Generation Niagara program. With Next Gen Niagara, we are more than extending the life of New York's largest renewable power plant. We are transforming the way it works, applying the latest digital technologies so that it can become even more reliable, efficient, and resilient. We are taking these steps to ensure that it continues its record peak performance for the next 50 plus years. Launched in 2012, today, today we are announcing the completion of that program, the 460 million life extension and modernization program. In addition, we have also completed, as the governor said, the digitization of the first of 13 units, our first milestone in the 1.1 billion next generation Niagara program, which kicked off in 2019. I am very proud of the work that we accomplished here. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, we managed to complete this work on schedule and on budget. We are truly blessed to have a great, great staff here at Niagara, including Daniela Piper, our recently appointed regional manager, my former chief of staff and head of our company's digital transformation initiative. And to the staff here in Niagara, especially our IBEW brothers and sisters, I want to say thank you. When we look back, we, we see just how much was achieved. The work of the Lewiston pump generating plant located over there, on, just on the other side of this enormous power dam, it involved repairing and overhauling each of the tw 12 turbine generating units. We replaced one turbine every eight to nine months to ensure that there was always at least 11 of the 12 in service to meet the state's energy needs. It's akin to modernizing an airplane while in flight. We are also celebrating the digitization of the first turbine here at the Robert Moses Power Plant. This is also a huge accomplishment, which Daniela will speak about in a few minutes. In addition to the work on our generating plants, NIPA is also investing heavily in transmission 
upstate and downstate. In fact, on Monday, Governor Hochul announced that the New York Power Authority, along with our partners, Energy Re, a division of the related companies, and Invenergy, a large renewable developer, will be working as a team to build more than 170 miles of new underground transmission from Delaware County to New York City, bringing renewable energy, wind and solar from upstate into New York City. That project is called the Clean Path New York Project. For the first time since the late 50s and 60s, we are rebuilding many miles of transmission. This will ensure that when we generate our clean carbon-free electricity, we can then carry and move that electricity across the state. Now, I'm a mechanical engineer. I have 34 years in this energy and utility business, and I just want to I'm still trying to wrap my head around, Governor, with what you announced on Monday. And this is what I came up with, a little bit of history. When we built the St. Lawrence FDR power project in Messina, New York, and the Niagara power project here in Niagara Falls, NIPA invested $6.5 billion in today's dollars for those two projects. Our Clean Path New York that the governor announced on Monday is an $11 billion investment in renewable energy and transmission delivered to our load centers in, in New York City. Almost twice the investment that we made in the late 50s and late 60s. And by the way, the governor did not only announce our project, she announced another project similar to ours. So the magnitude of her announcement is really historic. It's not only nation leading, it is world leading. It, is, it speaks about the urgency, her urgency, and to lead by example in addressing the climate crisis because as she said, the, it's happening as we're standing here today. Uh, it will create 10,000 jobs upstate and downstate. It will significantly reduce pollution and clean the air and disadvantage communities where we need to have better health outcomes. It would reduce greenhouse gases to battle cr the climate crisis and spur economic development statewide. This is truly an amazing, amazing time in energy. Now, as we focus on our long-term goals, including decarbonizing our energy system, building transmission, and meeting our customers' energy goals, we will continue to depend on this Niagara Power Project. It is the bedrock of New York's Clean Energy Foundation, and we will do all we can to preserve and enhance its value. This $1.1 billion investment in our Niagara Power Project speaks to our enthusiasm about Governor Hochul's energy vision. We are modernizing and digitizing to remain competitive and to ensure that all New Yorkers benefit from low-cost, reliable electricity. As New Yorkers, we are lucky to have a governor leading the way as we make the transition to a clean energy economy. As always, New York State will take the lead, and we are all excited about what we will achieve. Thank you again, everyone who work on the Lewiston pump generating plants, life extension and modernization, and all of you who are now working on Next Gen Niagara. Please accept my deep gratitude for your commitment and dedication. Now, let me turn over the mic to Daniela Piper. And just like the Buffalo Bills, where you need a winning quarterback in Joss Allen, we have our winning quarterback here in Western New York quarterbacking all this important work in the Niagara Power Project, Daniela Piper. Thank you so much, Gail. Good afternoon, everyone. So I am just thrilled to have the opportunity to welcome NIPA's longtime friend back to the Niagara Power Project in her new capacity as governor of New York. And as the first female plant manager in NIPA history, I must make mention that this is an ex extra special honor 
for me to welcome you here as the first female governor of New York in this very special place, Western New York. <laughs> I also want to thank all of our management and union staff who have come together to accomplish a tremendous volume of high quality work consistently over the last couple of years. Even through the challenges of the global pandemic that we have all experienced over the last year and a half. Now though I am new to this position as Gail mentioned, I do have a long history with this plant, not as long as some of our staff who have been here for three and, and four decades, but I've been here just over 14 years with the authority. And I, over that period, I did spend time working here as a developmental engineer and also leading transmission upgrades while based out of our White Plains headquarters. Now, as Gil mentioned, we have embarked on many multi-year life extension and modernization efforts across our fleet of generation and transmission assets. And the on-time and on-budget accomplishment of these projects is always a cause for celebration. This year alone, you heard about the billions we are investing, but this year alone here at the Niagara Power Project, we are on track to implement over $100 million in capital upgrades. And that is on top of operating and maintaining this power plant, which is crucial to the grid in New York State. Now, as you heard here, we have two generating facilities, the LPGP plant and this plant, the Robert Moses plant, where we are today. Uh, the LPGP plant, or Lewiston Pump Generating Plant, is one of the largest pump storage projects in New York State, and it's second only to NYPA's other pump storage project, the Blenheim Gilboa project. As you know, pump storage power plants act as large batteries that can store energy that can be made available when the grid needs it most. This capability is ideal for supporting the integration of intermittent renewable energy sources like wind and solar projects into the grid. The Lewiston Pump Generating Plant works in tandem with this plant, the Robert Moses plant, to provide a number of services that are critical to a reliable grid. Energy, capacity, black start capability, voltage support, flexibility to name a few. These, along with the plant's zero carbon attribute, serves as the foundation for meeting the goal set out by our governor in the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. A first step for Next Gen Niagara project was to upgrade the mechanical parts and digitize the control system for the first of 13 generating units. We also upgraded the generator's protection system this system is what protects our equipment from, from damage, and it also helps to limit disruption to the grid. All of these new systems will be tied back into our control room, which we are in the process of redesigning. This will provide operators with improved control and situational awareness to run the plant, and takes into account the latest in human machine interface technology and ergonomics. If you take a look at the renderings before you today, it'll give you an idea of the kind of transformations that we are making. So we've done the first unit, what is next? So after a period of monitoring and testing, we'll move on to a second generator which will have its control system upgraded and the subsequent mechanical and electrical overhaul will proceed on the other units. So as you've heard, this is a team effort. We are over 300 strong here at Niagara and we are supported by additional staff from throughout the organization. In particular, we have representatives here from project management who've traveled here and engineering out of headquarters in addition to our on-site staff. And they have been tremendous through this all. We've also had great support from our contractors and our subcontractors, and I'll just name a couple, Burns and McDonnell, Mitsubishi Power, Andrids, Eaton, Void Hydro, Niagara Coating Services, Ferguson Electric, GE Renewable Energy, and JSHP Transformer. So again, I want to thank you all for helping 
us to transform New York's energy future, and I thank you for your continued efforts to achieve the goals that we've set out for the Power Authority. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I want, to, I want to finish this day by thanking everyone for coming today and celebrating what has been achieved at this facility. Uh, Governor, uh, would you please come back to the podium? Uh, to commemorate this event, we would like to present to you with this photo of the Niagara Power Project taken by an illustrious photographer and longtime NIPA employee, Paul Pascarello. Paul, he's taking the pictures now. We look forward to inviting you back here to celebrate one great milestone after another as we strive to attain your bold energy vision for our state. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our ceremony. Thank you all for coming.